Okay. Good evening, everyone. I hope we are all happy to be here. My name is Dixon, and I'm going to be your service leader for uh, today. So, you're welcome to today's Anabiosi for the month of August. And uh, I'm actually very pumped, I should say, yeah, with the topics that uh, are going to be discussed over the whole month. I mean, being part of the committee, I mean, I didn't do much, but I was still part of the committee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was intriguing to be part of them, to see the minds at work. So I'm really happy, or I'm going to be happy for everyone who's going to be part of it, because it promises to be very intriguing, trust me. OK, so it's 6 o'clock, so we should have the opening hymn, and then we continue with the rest of the service. So we are going to do MHB 273. MHB 273. 
shall we have our seats? I'm always glad if hymns end with amen. I don't know why, but I love it. Hallelujah. So I'm going to introduce the, the speakers, and then we'll take a quick prayer. I was discussing with Leo uh, about the timing for, you know, the topics. I don't think it's enough, but we'll try and keep in time. So the speakers are Mr. Oh, sorry. Please. Dr. Yao Pebi. <laughs> and I nearly said Miles Moreau, but it's Miles Hagen, Dr. Miles Hagen. These are two seasoned speakers. Um, one of them flew across oceans to be here. Just to tell you how serious we are about our business. Yeah, so um, they are both fathers. They are both fathers, and uh, you know, Dr. Yalpeb is going to speak to us about raising children in the age of social media, which is a topic I'm much more concerned about. I don't have a child yet, but I, I seem to be drawn much into that particular topic. And Dr. Miles Hagan is going to talk about uh, vitamins for balanced Christian family life. Now that I read it, I think it's also a very good topic. <laughs> Yeah, so the theme for this month is um, walking Asian paths in contemporary shoes. And our anchor scripture is taken from Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. And I will read from the NLT. Jeremiah 6, 16. And I read. So it says, this is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old godly way, another version would say old Asian ways, or Asian ways, sorry, and walk in it. Travel in its path, and you will find rest for your souls. But you reply, as human as we are, no, that's not the road we want. And so, as a committee discussing this, it's, I feel like everybody should have been a part of the committee to know how. It went, it was a back and forth, back and forth, and you know, brilliant minds at work. And I was sitting in the periphery there just looking. Yeah, so, um, like I said, I'm intrigued for the life of the, uh, these two doctors who are going to be taking us to uh, the two topics for today. So, without very much ado, let's uh, share in a short word of prayer. Everlasting Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for life, we thank you for grace. We thank you for how far you have brought us as a church, as individuals, and as a, as a committee to bring these things to your people. Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that whatever you have purposed for these topics, Lord, you shall bring into illumination your word, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever the devil has planned against these words, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you shall sanctify them, Lord, that in the mighty name of Jesus, your people will have a heart that is ready to receive, Lord. We prepare the heart of everyone who is listening to us online and in person here. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you shall prepare their hearts, that you shall turn their heart of stone into a heart of flesh, that you, Lord, your God, Lord my God, you are going to, to let them to be able to understand these statutes, Lord. That at the end of the day, they shall say, Immanuel, this is how far you have brought us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, I was supposed to introduce the speakers, but I feel like if I'm to do that, I will not do justice to it as much as they will do. So, um, we don't want to spend much more time. So, I will invite Dr. Yalpebi to take us to the Raisin children in the age of social media. Dr. Alpevi. All right, good evening. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. I heard Bridge Church have become more charismatic. Can you give me evidence of that? Good evening. Good evening. All right, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Is it possible to have a handheld mic? Oh, you want me to stay here? Is this a strategy to keep me here? Anyway, it's fine. All right. So raising children in the age of social media, I think I have to 
project this. Let's see. They say technology is good only when it works. Can you see it? Is it on? Hello? Oh, yes, better. Wonderful. So, yes, thanks for the invitation. And um, I, I, this place gives me memories. Lots of memories. Because this, this was my school chapel. And so, I, I want to share a couple of pictures with you. Uh, this, was, this is me in the yellow ring in, in class two. And incidentally, this, this picture came to mind today. I decided to put it up only to hear, only to get a message this evening that that teacher of mine, amazing Mrs. Aqua, just passed away a week ago. Ah, may she rest in peace. But, but I, want to, I want to thank God for rich church, for the church. And I want to thank you for the school. Because that has shaped me to who I am today. I haven't been here in ages. Uh, that's our class four picture. Uh, again, I'm the yellow ring, but can you guess who's in the blue ring? It's, it's hard to see from here. But that's Junior Agogo. You remember the black star player? Yes, he was in my class. He used to do a lot of somersaults. And uh, he passed away, unfortunately, a couple of years ago. May he rest in peace as well. That I spent nine years on this compound. Every Wednesday, we were here for chapel. And all of that has been part of who I am today. So I give you thanks, Rich Church, for the school. Glory to God. So I was invited to speak today. I don't know why I was invited as a medical doctor, and yet the guy who's a doctor of business rather was given a vitamins top topic. <laughs> but I bring you greetings from my children. I have seven of them so far. So let's see. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so maybe I know a little bit about what I've been asked to talk about. Maybe a little bit. But in March, we had our seventh. Uh, he's barely five months old. And uh, we just arrived in Ghana less than 24 hours ago. So I really praise God for safety and all of that. Very rigorous COVID testing and all of that. And we are here. We praise God for that. But for the last 12 years or so, actually for the last 13 years, we've been missionaries. Uh, first in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, for a year, and then in Canada for the last 12. And uh, there's no, this is not why you invited me. The next time you invite me to talk about global missions, we'll do justice to that. Today we're talking about social media and raising children. So if you want to know a bit more about the story, how God called us into mission, how I got saved from an accident in which there were three of us, the other two died, and all of that, you can get a copy of this book. It's, it's called Thinking Outside the Window, and it will explain to you. But basically we've been involved in pastoring a Chinese church. I tell people only God can call an African to pastor an English-speaking Chinese church in a French city in North America. <laughs> and, and, and we're ministering to international students. So about 80% of the international students in North America come from the countries that are hardest to reach with the gospel, like Iran, Saudi Arabia, China, India, places like that. And so what an opportunity to reach them with the gospel, with practical hospitality and friendship evangelism, discipleship, leadership, training. So that was, that's what we've been doing, leading a team of about 100 staff and 500 volunteers, and on and on and on. So that's where I've been. I haven't practiced medicine since 2009, when I, God saved me from that accident. I felt God had saved me for a purpose beyond medicine. As, as wonderful as medicine is, even if I keep you alive to 120, you'll still die. And, you have, and there are eternal consequences of that. And I felt more drawn to those eternal consequences. Ha, uh, hats off for people like Dr. Hansen. You know, he's a great family friend, Dr. Katie Hansen. He's been practicing for years, and God bless him for that. Uh, I'm working now more on the software than the hardware. All right. So raising children in the age of media, in the age of social media. And um, back in my richer school days, there was nothing like social media. We could cause enough trouble on our own. Uh, no. <laughs> in fact, even the internet and email weren't mainstream then. All right? I'm talking about mid-90s. So, so talking about raising children in the age of social media is, is a fascinating topic. Now, in the first place, <laughs> I, I want to make two important comments. One is, I want to thank again Red Church for valuing family. Because it's not every church and certainly not every culture values family. And we lived in Canada for the last 12 years. People have told us in the face they would rather have a dog or a cat than have a child. Right? And one reason is that children, you know, dogs, they don't talk back to you. 
right? If you have enough children, you understand what I'm talking about. But really, really, um, the other the other thing I want to commend you for is also for having a high view of scripture. Now, not everybody has a high view of scripture, particularly in our age. People will rather listen to Oprah Winfrey, even if what Oprah Winfrey is saying is against scripture. It's part of all the LGTB key confusion because people no longer have a high view of scripture. So kudos for having a high view of scripture because everything we're talking about, we're talking about going back to the ancient pathways. All right. So well done for that. For this year in particular, I've been focusing on family foundations. Um, I run a company called, you know, which is named after me, Consulting Executive Coaching. And I've been fo- focusing a lot on family foundations because a lot of people, a lot of families are going, ending on the rocks. These are young, smart people, but they just can't do family together. And the thing is, my concern is that everything rises and falls on family. Everything. I'll give you a reason why. And God cares about family. I'm giving, giving this preliminary information before I get into my topic in particular because I happen to be the first speaker, kind of laying the foundation for the next four weeks or so. But family is incredibly important to God for a number of reasons. These are not all. If you want more, we can you know, do, join the mastermind the next time I do it. But first of all, it's, it's a reflection of God himself because God is family. God is father, son, Spirit, God is family. This is an old 1495, 1425 painting by Andrei Roblev, a Russian monk trying to depict the Trinity based on Genesis 18 and all of that. Anyway, but God is family. At the center of the universe is a family. Father, Son, Spirit. God cares about family. The other thing is that family, there are all these centers of influence in society. People call them gates. People call them spheres of influence. So there's art and entertainment, there's business, technology, there's education, religion, media, government. But guess what's in the, in the middle? Family. Family is the only thing that produces human beings for all the other gates. Family is the only, it's the only one. You can't have government without, you know. So family is in, it's, it's a center of influence. Again, it's important we talk about family and guide family and protect family. This is the cradle perspective. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And it's true, right? That everybody wants to change the world. No one wants to start at home. But we change the home by changing our home. I change the world by changing our homes. That's the cradle perspective. That's what I call the cellular perspective because the family is the basic unit of society. The family is the basic unit of the church. The family is the basic unit of humanity. You know, all the, when we say somebody has a cancer, basically we are saying that a cell has gone crazy. That's how society goes crazy. When the cells go crazy, the society goes crazy. That's what cancer is. Cells have decided to go crazy and reproduce at a time at, at, at a rate they shouldn't. And then they metastasize and things like that. So if we don't take care of family, we are not taking care of society. It's, it has a cellular perspective. But they said also that if you calculate your life, you know, they say hindsight is 2020, yeah. Once you look back, you see, you get perfect vision, but it's too late. They said there's no one who on their deathbed has been heard to say, I wish I had spent more time at work. Most people's regret has to do with family. So let's calculate, let's, let's trust the Lord to number our days are right. And then, uh, this is a funny one, but very pertinent. Have you noticed how everybody's telling us to stay at home? Stay at home, go home, 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 home. The very place we, many of us neglected is the place that is saving us now. Home. Home. Guys, this is an incredibly important topic. I want to talk, break this down in four parts. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> okay. I'm supposed to speak for 20 minutes. I've used 10 minutes to do this uh, nonsense introduction. All right. So <laughs> I'll give you as much as I can in, in these four parts. I'll give you some caveats regarding the topic. I'll provide some context with particularly some research, some statistics from Pew Research. And um, I'll give you what I call a, a concentric circle approach because we can look at, I can give you a whole, like a hundred, a hundred, uh, what do you call it, <laughs> rules, suggestions. But I want us to look at things first from a strategic point of view before we get into tactical and logistical. Okay? And then I'll conclude. All right. So, 
Let's get in. What are the caveats I want to give? First of all is this. Nothing works until you work it. Nothing works until you work it. Now, when Bill Gates and Melinda divorced, um, it was announced about what, a month or two ago. I think officially it happened yesterday. Like there, was a, there was a newspaper item in, in, the, in the, was it in the Guardian. Marriage doesn't work. All right, that's what the, the whole generation has said. Marriage doesn't work. Family doesn't work. But I'm here to tell you that nothing works until you work it. I can tell, and tell you that, you know what, the, you know, I bought a new Mercedes Benz, it doesn't work. How come? Oh, I sit in the thing, the thing doesn't go. Oh. <laughs> right? The other thing is, not only can you say that my Mercedes Benz doesn't work because you've not, you've not learned how to work it, but you've got to work it the right way. So I come and tell you, oh, Miles, I bought a new Mercedes Benz, I put a uh, kerosene inside. You know, you know the thing that they go. I mean, I, put, I use it for, the kerosene is not working, the car is not going. So that's an important caveat because you see, if we do not work marriage, we do not work parenting, we do not work family the way God has prescribed it in his word, we can't say it doesn't work. And I'm saying this because if we are not living and working our families based on biblical principles, it's not social media which is going to destroy our families. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? So social media is, has come on top of the things we need to contend with already. Nothing works until we work it. If you're not following the car principles, it's not going to work anyway, and you can't blame social media. That's an important caveat. Jeremiah 6, 16, which is our theme verse, this is what the Lord says, stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. You will find rest for your souls. This generation needs rest. We need rest. And that rest will come only by going back to what God says we should do. I like to call the Bible basic information before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E. That's the manual for life. We had better go back to the ancient pathway. Stop listening to old, you know, old men who are going to be around for at most 100 years and go. There's 2,000 years of wisdom of the church. 6,000 years the Bible has been written and documented. And you're listening to somebody who can't even keep his marriage. And you want him to rule the world. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Go back to the ancient pathways. Go back to the ancient pathways. The second caveat is this. In a way, the topic is some way. Because raising children in the age of electricity, or raising children in the age of radio, raising children in the age of television, like you're like, oh, this guy, what's wrong with it? Yeah, precisely. In a sense, there's nothing unusual about this because social media is neutral. Just like electricity is. Radio is neutral. You decide what to do with it and what effect it will have on you, okay? So social media is a good servant but a terrible master. So social media is not an enemy. It's not the enemy. And I want to make that very clear. Because for a lot of people, it's like, oh, this thing that has come, hey, it's killing us. No. People have used social media to find friends and relatives that they would never otherwise have found. I could tell you many things that are done with social media that are awesome, including support groups and things like that. Let me give you a bit of a context of raising children in the age of social media. Now, a research was done by Pew Research that showed that this is the U.S. statistics. I don't think we have Ghana statistics. If we do, I'll be very happy to hear and compare. But I think we can draw some lessons from the U.S. numbers. Two-thirds of parents in the U.S. say that parenting is harder today than it was 20 years ago. By the way, social media is only 20, 25 years old. And actually, they start with Facebook. They were earlier, uh, earlier versions. All right? Two-thirds of parents say that parenting is harder now than 20 years ago. With many citing technologies and like social media and smartphones as a reason. Wow. So majority of parents who say that parenting is harder today give some reasons why. I want to get into them shortly. But you see, you know, basically, 66% said it's harder than 20 years ago. 26% say, oh, it's about the same. That just is very interesting. It makes like 47% of it. And then there's change morals, you know, more violence, drugs, then tech gives access, exposure to younger age, more expensive technology, right? Both parents need to work. No, parenting is more expensive because most parents need to work. Can't discipline kids like before, kids less respectful, parents face more judgment, high expectations. That's one of the challenges with picture of social media, comparison. You know, you see somebody does a picture, 
10th wedding anniversary, I bought my wife Mercedes C class. Not pressure, Mars is getting pressure. Because, <laughs> all right, more devices, distractions, time with screens, less family time, smartphones in general, bullying is a real issue, cyberbullying, online predators, they are there, and other things. So these are some reasons given. Now it's very interesting that a majority of parents are concerned that their child might spend too much time on screens and, and have reached out to doctors for advice. I found this very interesting. That the number one people go people number one group of people parents go to for advice on how much screen time is enough is actually doctors. Very interesting. Not youth pastors, not you know, not the church, doctors. Very, very interesting. Maybe it's a US context, but something to think about. Okay. Most parents don't think it's acceptable for a child under the age of twelve to have their own smartphones. I think it's smart. Um, I, I just had a conversation as I was preparing for this with my 14 year old, he's almost 14, and we're talking about, you know, I, have, I, have, I have an old iPhone I could give him, and we said we're discussing the pros and cons and things like that, but I don't think it's, it's wise to give a child under 12, and some of you do it, that, some, of, some Ghanaian parents are doing it because they think that it's chic, it's classy, uh, we can talk after this. 80% of parents of young children say that their child watches videos on YouTube, now that's important, this is very, very important because YouTube has all these adverts that play and you can't tell what will play in between. So you may take a child. Usually there shouldn't be adverts on children's channels and things like that, but you, you, you never know. Just one advert, you know, man, woman, naked, and you know, something else. And that's, that's a different story. Okay. So there's something I wanted to mention here. Is it? come back to that. So yes, what does all this mean? What does all this mean? I'm talking about a concentric approach to dealing with raising children in the age of media this way. Now, and if, you are, if you're in business, you're familiar with Sinex circles, and I've modified it. The core of anything is the why. That's the strategic consideration. Next is tactical, then logistical. Everybody knows that the what. If I ask you about research, Everybody knows, oh, rich church, people go to church there, they have a school, everybody knows what. That's the outer, the logistical things. The tactical is the next, very few, few know the how, how things actually happen. And very, very few know the why. Why was rich church even put there in the first place? Why is it interdenominational? Why is it non-denominational? Things like that. The reason why I'm saying this is that I'm going to give you, depending on how many minutes I get, I have like two minutes left, I may give you a list of do's and don'ts when it comes to Parenting children in this age of social media. But that is not as important as the core. The strategic reason why this is important. The strategic reason why this is important is that God is building his kingdom. And God chooses families to build his kingdom. He called Abraham. Remember Genesis 12. Just like he made Adam and Eve in the beginning. He made the first family. I told God himself his family. Genesis 12, he calls Abraham. And says that I will bless you and make you a blessing to the nations. That's what God is about. God, when we talk about mission, that's what it is. God is on a threefold mission. Number one, to bring himself glory through the obedience and worship of all peoples. Number two, to bring people a blessing. Number three, to vanquish evil and establish his kingdom. And God does this through family. That is why God has called your family. And so the strategic thing I want to leave you with is this. Pray that God will you work a miracle and give us X number of faithful children who on average will then have X number of faithful children generation after generation for the next 200 years. What's your vision for your family? I hear to tell you that if you have a strong vision for your family and you keep casting that vision for your family, no matter what the tides come, no matter what the waves come, no matter what the social media, there are going to be more tides that are going to come. But vision is just like the song we just sang. You know, that the song said, Lord, let my passion for you be so strong, let it be so fiery that it burns all earthly passion. Have you cast a strong vision for your family? Do you have, I mean, some of us work in the corporate world, we have, you know, corporate vision statements. We don't have any family vision statement. We have a family vision statement, we read it every week, and the children recite parts of it, they ask questions, we discuss, and things like that. One part of our family mission statement says this. Every entertainment shall be wholesome, building, and beneficial. Even the two-year-old probably can regurgitate that to you. 
So I don't. That, that's the thing. I cannot be everywhere. And I can give you some 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 tidbits. But the child, when they click something, need to know: is this wholesome? Is it building? Is it beneficial? God wants to build His kingdom through your family. Have you cast a vision for your family? Do you have rhythms for your family? Rhythms like everybody knows what time it is to go to bed, what time it is to wake up, what time it is to have family devotions. A lot of families have stopped having family devotion. You are contending against social media and you don't have family devotion. You are not giving any vitamins. You are not giving any, any, any in the age of COVID-19, any vaccination to the world. And you are letting your children go out there. No, please. We've got to reprioritize. Let me tell you something. It's better your child goes to an average school near you so that you can wake up, he can sleep enough, she can sleep enough, you can have your family devotions, etc., and go to an average school while she's getting good parenting, good biblical training at home, then drive two hours to a great school. Your son is learning a lot of chemistry or whatever, Cambridge, etc., has no foundations in God. You will regret it. Let's rethink. My time is over. How am I going to do this? <laughs> Tactically, these are the five main considerations. General, General safety, safety, including cyberbullying, cyber appropriate, appropriate content, content and appropriate, appropriate interaction, interaction, including sexting. sexting. You know, there's something called sexting. Yeah? yeah. Sexting, sexting is basically is sending sexually sexual explicit messages, messages photos, photos or videos between smartphones or social media apps. apps okay? It can also happen over email. email. Uh... Privacy, privacy issues, issues is another consideration. Then the limits in terms of screen time. How much is too much? And, and then, then distraction. distraction. Let, let me let, let me land on screen in three minutes, okay? okay? So, so that um, we, we can we can go home. home. So, so in terms of privacy, privacy let me give you a few things, things to think about. about. Uh, uh, read the website's private policy before sharing any personal, personal information. information. Because, because on some, some websites, they have the right for anyone to read anything you post any time. So imagine what happens to a child that way. Okay. Uh, check, uh, check your, your child's, child's privacy policy settings, settings to make sure they are, they are sharing more information than they want. For example, their birth date, their location. There are people, people who are predators. predators. They'll come for the child. child. If they, they use a GPS-enabled smartphone or tablet, make sure that they're, they're posting updates, photos, and videos that they are, it's without geotags. Okay? Geotags are the, that, the thing that shares location of where the photo was taken. All right? Make sure these are turned off on devices. And then encourage your child, if possible, Unless, Unless it's for school, school or something like that. that. If it's, it's possible, possible. And social media, how do you schools have their own platform? platform. Right? right? So, so for social media, media it's possible. The child should use their nickname, nickname, if possible. Um, it just yes, works better that, that way. way. In terms of, of privacy, privacy, again, make sure your child keeps every account password, password protected and have, and have them change the password often. Remember the child not to share passwords, not even with friends. And your child should not accept friend requests from people they don't know in real life. This, this is important, important if you have teenagers. teenagers. They, they really love Snapchat. Snapchat. All right? So, so Facebook, a lot of young, young people are leaving Facebook for us older ones. ones. Snapchat, Snapchat is the thing. The idea, the idea is that you take a photo, photo you know, you, you could be doing, doing anything, you could be new, whatever. whatever. The, the idea is that you vanish after, after a few seconds. seconds. So, so all your friends want to watch as soon as they come. But the thing is that the internet never forgets. And the least that can happen is that somebody will take a screenshot. And that is it. So, so tell, tell your child, child generally, if it's something, something you don't want them to see, something you'll be embarrassed if Mrs. Abbas, Abbas sees, don't, don't post it. it. All right? right? And uh, ideally tell them to uh, uh, protect the privacy of their friends to ask permission before they post things. Now, I want to, let me land on a couple of these things because when it comes to limits or screen time, we, the parents, need to set a good example for the children. I, I can, can be horrible, horrible on this thing, thing because, because my, my work emails, emails are on it, everything, everything is on it, and, and so sometimes, sometimes it's, 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 it's approaching dinner, dinner and I'm on the phone. We've, we've got, got to model, model it for, for the children. children. You know, you know the, the thing, thing with children, children is that, that they, they do not do what, what we say. say. They do what they see. All right? So, so I, can I can tell you, you, oh, you know, you've had enough screen time if they keep seeing, and we can have the excuse that we're working on our phones, but God knows, and they also know. All right? So let's model good behavior on our own social media accounts. Set screen time limits. This is so important. I was shocked a number of weeks in a row when Apple gave me the, 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 the feedback on how much time I had spent on my phone. I was shocked. And I'm not the, the, like the biggest social media person. 
Some of you, I don't think you even work home. Because the times you send messages and this video and this... Like, quack, 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 quack. <laughs> I don't think we are working. Anyway, so set limits. Okay, tell yourself, I'm not going to have more than two hours or whatever it is. It's true, many of us watch less TV. And so we can say we are making up in that way. But let's be careful about that. Teach your child the value of unplugging from their devices and from technology from time to time. Linked with this is distraction. Uh, many people have withdrawn from real life because of the excitement and the immediacy, the adrenaline of social media. Because, but because life itself can be bore, bore, boring and life itself is hard. So we get into social media and it's a world where we're like, uh huh, you know, everybody, you know, respectable, Dr. Yao, you know, you know, everybody here doesn't have any problems, you know. So it's tempting to be more interested in somebody who is 10,000 kilometers away in China than your spouse that is right here giving you headaches as far as you are concerned, right? So let's be careful about that. And let's be careful about seeking surface level attention rather than meaningful connection. There are some other statistics I could have given you, but because my time is up, I will let that go. I can, I can let you have the presentation so that you can have this. But 68% of parents say they at least sometimes feel distracted by their phone when spending time with their children. May God help us, because the most important job we have as parents is the one we have, that God has given us. Jobs will come and go. Degrees come and go. But the family is for God's purposes for establishing his kingdom. So, i like to end with this. Jesus grew holistically in wisdom and stature, finding favor with God and man. And I want to challenge each of us to pray this prayer. God, would you work a miracle and give me X number of children? They could be biological, they could be adopted, whatever. Who would on average have X number of children? On and on, generation after generation, generation after generation, generation after generation. For your glory on earth, that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is the strategic reason we are doing all of this, what do you call it, and as you see and all of this. That is the strategic reason. It's not to give you a good bunch of ideas, answer questions, give you a bunch of rules. I could have given you so many things you need to watch out for. Know about the websites, know the apps, keep, let the children have computers in the common place where you can watch what they're using. All these, I, I can give you the PowerPoint. All these are rules and these are logistical things. Remember the strategic thing. God is counting on you to raise the next generation that will raise the next generation that will raise the next generation until the earth is filled with the glory of the knowledge of God as the waters cover the sea. Until Jesus returns and when we shall see him, we shall be like him. That's what this is about. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll send you the, uh, the slides so that there are about three things uh, Amazing. Please, a clap of hands for Dr. Yalpaidi. Like, if he was given more time, it would have been of benefit to all of us, but sadly, we don't. So, uh, we are going to go on to the next session. Uh, we are going to invite, uh, yeah, I like that clap. <laughs> uh, Dr. Miles Christian Hagen, who has his name in the topic he chose. So, <laughs> vitamins for a balanced Christian family. Like. Dr. Miles. Hi, good evening. Doc has set a very, very good standard, and indeed, a lot of what he's going to share about are similar to what I'll be giving some insight into. And I believe we are all ready to get into a very interesting thing. Some will ask, why the topic? Vitamins. And like Doc started, vitamins. When you hear that, is it medicine that can make my life balance? Is it medicine that's going to transform an aspect of my life? And all these are what would get us to know what we can do differently as a family to transform and make things better for us. I'm sure they'll be projecting shortly. So as I wait for that, essentially I'll be giving some insight, a general overview of what this aspect of having a balanced Christian family life is about. The next we'll also look at what it means to have the balance 
And then finally, there will be some vitamins I'll be sharing with you. I want to wait for the projection to start. Okay, it's good. Yes. So I tell me to be controlled from the top. So, uh -huh. so I see you. Okay. All right. So I believe uh, the slides will start. So let's start from the overview as a presentation outline, and then we continue from there. As I wait for that, let me just flow so that time doesn't delay. So when we talk about having a balanced Christian family life. It is how we make the most of our time. Note, as Doc ended, every time we spend is very, very critical. And you realize why there's a focus, especially when COVID began. Why it's about staying at home, not staying at work. It's because that is where we spend a bulk of our time. And there's something that should make spending time at home precious. Something that should make that opportunity one that you would always cherish. And when we talk about having a balance, it's about making sure we are blending a bit of what we do out there as against in-house and how we can nurture it together. So let's move to the next slide. So I'm going to share in summary. Okay, this is better. All right, thank you. Good. So it's going to be an overview. The next would be about the seven areas in life to balance. Then the final bit will be the seven vitamins I want us to take away. Next slide. Overview I've shared already. And I'm sure just as you see a big elephant trying to balance on a ball, think about this. When you have to stand on a tight rope and flow from one end to the other, it's never going to be easy. It's about having a balance, which means if you want to have a balance, it's going to take effort. It's going to take some activity on your part. And after tonight's session, we are going to see how we can take effort to make that difference in our life. Next slide, please. We are going to look at one model which was set. And I'm going to use the Lord Jesus Christ. When you take John 17, verse 4, you realize he did one thing. He fulfilled his divine purpose. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the first example he gave us when it comes to balance. It is never easy to use 24 hours to do what you have to do. But just think about this. The one we try to exemplify, we as Christians stand for one critical cause, to be like Christ. And how did the Lord Jesus do it? What made him know what to do? Second, look to God, not to the other instances. There will be obstacles. There will be turbulences. There will be things that will come up. But the Lord Jesus gave us these two clear scenarios. Firstly, fulfill your divine purpose. Secondly, look to God and not to others. And if you read Mark 135, there was something he stated there. And the nugget there was he clearly defined his priorities. As I share the seven nuggets, which is the next slide, we are going to see what makes that big difference. When it comes to life, there are some seven areas you have to balance. The very first, family. We have health. We have work. We also have our spiritual life. We also have personality. We have social and financial. These are things in life we always have to balance. And I'm sure everyone will say, I always have to find a balance between it. And although they've moved ahead, the uh, stone would have shown you that the family stone was quite big. But it stands above all the rest, which tells you something. In every circumstance, we are always going to have the family, and that's going to hold the biggest chunk. Next slide, please. So we'll start with the vitamin. Very first, it has to be founded on the relationship we have with our living God. When we are talking about having a balanced family life, 
very first is how we as a family have a relationship with our living God. And Doc said it. How many families actually spend time having morning devotion? How many have family prayer time? How many are able to actually spend time talking about what they have read in the word? If you want to have a balanced life, just think about this. Commencing in the day with prayer, you are going to go through the day thinking about what you may have reversed or talked about, and that alone will make your spiritually uh, body feel excited. There are times I'll be in the office and I'll get this inspiration. Pray about this. Talk about this. Share this message with someone. And it all starts because in the morning, you had had a time of prayer. And that makes a big difference. A family that loves to spend time in prayer, reading the word, it, it's emboldened, strengthened. When it comes to even work, there could be challenges in the office. But in the morning, as you pray, you are quickened, you are strengthened, you are motivated to go out. As you are able to balance your spiritual life by sharing these great times in the morning, just imagine how the day will go. Certain arrows may come at a certain time, but because you started on the foundation of prayer together, and that's why when you start as children, you and your children, if they learn that every morning we say a word of prayer, every morning we read the word, in the evening, before we sleep, we pray, you are already starting a culture of prayer which nurtures you and transforms you and enlightens you. And when you read Joshua 1.8, we are told, be sure of this. Let this book of the law never depart from you. Meditate on it day and night. Jeremiah 33, verse 3, he tells you, call to me and I'll answer you. If a young child starts with that foundation, knowing that every time in my life, my family were always praying, you will start another family, also founded on prayer, and that will continue. And that alone makes you overcome any obstacle. That's a critical vitamin. Develop a family prayer time and connect with God to grow spiritually. Second vitamin. There's a need to have a sense of belongingness. And when I talk about belongingness, it's about how we promote greater love in the family. Ask yourself this. How many times possibly you had to take a decision? Maybe you are moving houses. So you're living somewhere and you're going to move somewhere. And your young children are there. How many of us interact and find out? Say, oh, we'll have to move from cantonment to rich. What do you think about it? Or we possibly have to change schools. Or daddy has had another promotion. He's moving from where he used to work and he's moving there. How often do we get that opportunity to take ideas, suggestions, and thoughts from everyone in the family? One interesting thing about that is it makes everyone in the family, regardless of the age, even if you as the parents decide, let us find out what they think. Just imagine the difference. You feel a part of it. You feel part of that unity. And that alone makes a big transformation when it comes to taking family decisions. You all feel belonged to a certain cause. In the same way, the child will be able to tell you something that happened at school. If there's any worry, any concern, any challenge, there's some openness. The little one knows that I can always tell mommy this, I can always tell daddy this. The next phase is as they grow as teenagers, they can open up and talk to mommy or daddy about something because a certain culture has started. Critical nugget. Strengthen the family bond by creating a sense of belongingness. No idea is useless. No idea is fruitless. Every idea is worth sharing. We'll move to the next vitamin. They say something about serenity. And if you read Ephesians 5, 18 to 19, you are reminded, be filled with the Spirit speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. There's often an instance where certain families, you don't have anyone opening up because the interactions are not sweet. There's no kindness in the language. Even as a little one starts talking, someone will say, I'm busy, not now. There's also another family where there is so much excitement because no matter how busy daddy and mommy tend to be, even if they are on a virtual call, and a little one comes in. They'll make time and say, oh, I'm doing this. Give me some time, I'll get back to you. 
This third vitamin is develop a sense of serene environment where there's kindness in our voice, kindness in our speech, kindness in our rendition. And that makes a big difference. What the difference is, is you will always get your little ones opening up to you. As they grow into teenagers, even as adults, you will get an adult going to talk to his father or mother because there is something they have nurtured. So I know even if I tell my parents, I'm thinking of moving from this job to another, what do you think? How do you feel about that? It is not that he's old and too mature, but there is this flow and it makes everything nice. There's a need to balance and have value when it comes to kindness and speaking. Utterances, statements, at the right time can make everyone feel comforted. Next vitamin. This is one which I'll say is my favorite. Encourage playfulness and exploration. I don't know how many of us actually make time, possibly when you are on a long leave, to go somewhere with your family to have a time to relax. I'm sure Doc is in town. He'll make some time to go and then relax somewhere. How many of us spend that time and just imagine how the stresses can be released? What makes a big difference with that is you may think there's so much you have on your head, but spending a day or two or a small time out of the house makes you feel more relaxed. And like the image there, you are playing, but you are learning. You are sharing ideas. You are interacting. You are getting to bond. And even as you do that, someone may say something that will get you to know what pressure he's facing at school, at work, in society. There's a reason why certain children go into their rooms and they are locked up. Simply because they don't feel there's much play. There's not much excitement. So if I come and tell daddy, I didn't do well. My results are not as good as the previous year. Are they going to listen? But when there's some playfulness, even in the interaction, in the evening, you say, oh, what did you do today? How was school? And you get to find something, and before long, it's so exciting. The child will feel, oh, I can tell that even when things are not good, how much more when things are better? There's this openness, there's this transparency, and it's because you've created an environment that makes it nice, zeal, and there's so much going on. Next nugget, please. The next one is about creating certain routines. And this vitamin is also enshrined around how we can plan in line with the vision and mission of the family. As Doc was sharing his vision, I was just thinking about it. Just imagine, what vision do I have for my family? And what are we planning to do? But if we have a certain clear vision, we can also plan a certain routine. How many of us have a family evangelism time? So we decide that we are sharing the word between ourselves. And after that, we will share it with our neighbors. We'll go out. How many of us have a faith journal where you can actually write the dreams you remember you had or certain visions you had or certain aspirations you have in a very nice journal and then possibly one weekend Every Sunday after church, you decide to open your faith journal and then discuss what did you experience? What have you dreamt about? Another can be testimonies. At Contemporary Service, we share a lot of great testimonies. And in Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship, we also share a lot of testimonies. And I know in church, we do the same. Now, the testimonies tend to be overlooked because most of us are expecting to see something extraordinary. But sometimes, when you have a faith journal, you can actually write certain testimonies, experiences you had. And as a family, you are building your faith together, expanding to overcome any obstacle. And that's because you've made time to set a special routine. Possibly it's about how you keep your environment, watering plants. So you decide, let us go out. Let's take a walk. Let's water our plants. And through that, you are actually bonding together because that routine can make you break the ice. Possibly I offended one of my children, but as we water and we talk about nature, the blessings of the Lord upon our lives, he can open up and tell me, 
oh, this thing we did the last time hurt me. And we can have an opportunity to discuss, I apologize, and things are sweet. And that is what makes routines exciting. If you don't have a routine, will you be able to open up, break the ice, share something that possibly someone has hidden for a long time? So one day, just wake up, let's clean the house. As you are doing it, it seems just like a casual event, but the inspiration from it can be amazing. Vitamin six, how can we make our homes feel good? Very interesting. And this vitamin is one we should look at and do it well. And I always say it's about how we plan, how we section our time, and how we can make everyone feel comfortable. So you could decide, today, maybe you have a small room, you used to dump a lot of your books there. Let us all go into that room and do something. Or today we are cleaning daddy's room, daddy and mommy's room, or little brother's room, Kofi's room. We are all going to do it together. Just imagine how, as a family, you all get in there, you support each other. That makes a big difference because your little ones, no matter how old they are, will learn a new nugget. It is true observation. You are seeing something. This is how we do it. When they start their own family, they will nurture the same. And it gets to a certain stage where you realize each one is learning a new gift, a new talent. Sometimes through those nice things about making the environment, you get to even explore and identify certain talents. Possibly your child is an artist. But looking at how they even lay the bed will give you a vision into what he or she potentially can do. But if you've never done that, how would you be able to observe that, oh, Amma is good at this, Kofi is good at that? This is a nugget we shouldn't play around with. It's always as simple as making the home environment sweet, but what you learn out of it, amazing. Next nugget, please. And the seventh vitamin, time. Make quality time to develop memories together. As Doc was talking, one thing that came to mind is how many of us have a selfie moment? Possibly after church. Most of our wives like that. So after church, she's looking good in a dress. Oh, let's take a nice picture. And that will take time. Some of us decide that, oh, I don't have time. Let's go. Some of us say, uh, the men are always in a hurry, so we don't, yes. But think about this. Make time to create great memories. Make time to talk about things together. And with the advent of technology, it's about using your tools. Social media is there. It's not about posting so much, but even having a family WhatsApp group, whether the children are here or overseas, you can still connect. There are some families where they can actually be sharing motivational messages. So it's posted. So if those in the US, UK, Japan, wherever, once it's posted there, all the siblings are reading. And that way you can actually communicate if there's anything happening. And you can even encourage yourselves. Possibly there's a turbulence here. That motivational message goes to all of them and they share insights together. It's about making the family connect, but time, time, time. So, in summary, uh, let's go to the next slide. There were seven vitamins I shared. I'll quickly recap them. The very first is develop a family time of prayer and connect to God spiritually. What this does is, whether the children are with you now as they grow, get into the senior high, get into university, get even into forming their own family, they learn how to talk to God. And they know that God has a plan and purpose for each and every one of them. So no matter where they are, they will always connect with their Father in heaven. If you make it a point to do it every morning, whether they are tired or not, they will revise their plan and make sure they pray. Second, create a sense of belonging and unity to strengthen the family bond. And it's also very, very critical when there's an absence Possibly someone is feeling lonely. That bond alone makes the family connect. It gels together. 
So I may be at home, my wife may have traveled, I may be with the boys alone, but once we have created that sense of belonging, it creates that atmosphere that regardless of where anyone is, we'll be able to connect. And this is what we'll do. Third nugget, develop a serene environment that encourages kind interactions. Our words, our utterances, our conduct, it makes a big difference. It makes us manage our marriages. It helps with family engagement and makes even the presence of social media not influence us in any way. Because at the end of the day, through our interactions, someone will open up and tell someone in the family that, oh, this is the issue I face. This is something I've experienced. Next one was about encouraging playfulness and exploration. We can only develop talent if we are playful, if we work together. If our parents look at what we do, we're able to identify talent, and it helps us. You yourself, as you grow and develop your own family, will also develop an eye to be able to identify certain talents in your little ones, and that takes you to the next level. Vitamin five, develop some routines that can be depended on. Some children isolate themselves, and by creating these routines, they will not go and hide in their room, saying, oh, I'm doing my own thing. Because of a routine, he will have to come out and interact. Possibly family dinner time, family play time, family journal time. All these makes a big difference. Vitamin six, create a home environment that makes the family feel good. When you have morning devotion time, the environment is perfect. When you have that sense of developing a culture that is sweet, it makes everything wonderful in the family. Even when someone is hurting and the family feels good, sometimes even about having a fragrance, a nice aroma, there could be so much stress out there. You come home and there's stress. But you enter the home and the environment is sweet because there's a fragrance that welcomes you. Something that is so exciting that you feel, yes, this is what I want to feel. Who would want to miss on coming back home? That's why some people will go and spend a long time after work, but they're out there. The environment is not exciting. But if the environment is homely, welcoming, they will always come. And the seventh was make quality time every time. No matter how busy anyone is, if you want that balance as a Christian in your home to share great memories, make time. Never give an excuse that I'm too busy because we'll always be busy. But if you make time, a portion time, you'll be shocked at what you can do. With all this said, final slide. It's about how we can blend these vitamins. And I'm sure when you see a family smiling like this, the question is, how do they do it? What are they doing? What is making the difference? Based on these vitamins, we can actually have a daily exciting time because there's going to be a revision in how the family coordinates and makes things. One thing I'll say is we should always remember God's ultimate plan is for us to be in him and to please him. So never think the family was created as you alone. God knows why he's brought us together. And there's a reason why we are where we are. And because God has a purpose and plan for every life, there's never a need for you to be worried or stressed. Go to him in prayer if he needs prayer. If it is an encouraging word, encourage each other. If it is about doing something together, to blend together, do it. And regardless of the stage in life you've got into, you could be as young, in the middle, or even old. There will be storms, there will be challenges, there will be turbulences. There will also be good times, there will be great achievements, and there will be successes. But we should always rest in the presence of our living God. And that is where we'll feel that our hope will never win, and we'll have a good balance. Always remember this, God is with us, so we are more than conquerors. To have the balance in the family, make it a point to see God's face and make it a point 
to connect with everyone who is in the family. God bless us all, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Marx. So, um, we will take time for questions. So, if um, we have any questions, we can ask and then... We actually have uh, questions that were posted online, but we'd like to take those who are here first so that we can uh, address them first before those we have. So if we have, you have any questions for any of the speakers, you can just raise your hand and the mic will come to you. Any questions? Okay, I think we are, okay. Um, thank you very much, both speakers. Fantastic job. Um, some of us feel that we, we've missed a lot. You know, the children are now in university. Some uh, these things should have been started long ago. How do we, you know, habits have been formed, you know, and all that. You know, now we are fighting with one who is 14. Bring the mobile phone. Shut up. Go away. You know. How how do we you know I feel that I missed missed a lot I mean those who are coming up now fantastic this is something to build up so how can you help us please thank you oh, sorry my wife wants to say and this is just to add to what he said you know Dr Pepe when you were talking I didn't understand most of the terms you put up there some of us were born before computer so. With the older children, it was a bit easier because the mobile phone wasn't so prevalent then. But for our last born, who is 14, he does things I have no clue about. I ha I'm totally blank. So how do you monitor someone who knows more than you? When he takes your phone, he can do certain things that you are holding a phone and you have no clue about anyway. I mean, how do you manage Those are very good questions. Uh, well, for the first question, <laughs> the quality of our lives depend on the quality of our decisions. And the quality of our decisions depends on the quality of our information. So I can understand how you're feeling. And for those who are younger, I hope we realize what a great opportunity this is. You know, to have fora like this to learn and to grow. I can, I can understand the sense of, uh, I wish I had known this. But as it said, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Right? There are still things, there are still traditions, there are still rhythms that you can build. Even as a further grown person, but even more importantly, as a grandfather. That is one thing I want to encourage many of you with. You know... When God called Abraham, I told you God, God's, God's plan is to extend his mission, his kingdom through family. We see that call in Genesis 12. He says, you know, leave your country, your people, your father's household, and go to a land I'll show you. We don't see the secret to why Abraham, it's okay, it's okay, this is family, uh, let, them, let, them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. We don't see why Abraham in particular until you go to Genesis 18. And God says, this is why I've chosen Abraham. Do you know why? Because I know Abraham. He would order his household, his children, and his household after, after them in my ways. So the hope is that the work is not over. It doesn't end with parenting. It continues with grand parenting. So say, God... Give me an opportunity to mold my grandchildren in ways that I was not even able to mold my children. The ministry continues. And that, for me, that's a bit of encouragement that I like to give. The other thing is to also go on a campaign to stack, make a ministry out of what you did not know. Uh, someone like, uh, was it, was it T.D. Jakes I had saying that God can take your mess and make it, make it a message, Right? Any parent now will listen to you because you have advice, you have experience, etc. And say, look, 
These are the things that we wish we knew. You have a whole ministry <laughs> to be able to bless others. Because guess what? God's kingdom is not just about your small family. It's about all of our families here together. And you can bless so many more because of... So don't look at the missed opportunity to look at the new opportunity going ahead. Regarding... <laughs> regarding, uh, yes, uh, the, the newer generation, yeah, they're wild. I mean, they're amazing. I want to give you some consolation, but I also want to challenge you. The consolation is that we cannot monitor every single thing. Like I told you, I have like three pages of logistical things you can do. Setting timers on devices. Like all the devices in our home are timed. Because we realize that some people, they wake up at dawn to go and do their business. Right? And so we, 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 we pre-program the, 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 all the, the laptops and stuff. You can't use it till 9 in the morning or whatever it is. So there are logistical things we can do. You've, we've got to trust that as we bring up a child in the way he should go, that's what the Bible says. And when he's going, you know, we've got to trust that God's word, the vitamins we are giving to these children, God is doing something in their heart. Because ultimately, we can't monitor everything they see, everywhere they go. Otherwise, we become what is called helicopter pilots. Hey, helicopter parents. Have you heard that term before? Helicopter parents. You're always hovering. Oh, yeah, then one offering, one, and then I'll share. You can't do that. You're not the Holy Spirit. So if we are not doing our part, which is giving them the word, praying for them, praying with them, and all these things, so that God will do his part, when we can, then, we are, then that's where we are failing. We all should be able to come before God and say, God, I did my part. You know I did my part. But unfortunately, many of us are not. And we will, be, we will sound guilty for that reason. The other thing I'll say is the challenge I'm giving you is that it's not enough to say I was born DC. That's what my mother also says. I was born before computers. The first point I mentioned of the logistical part was actually to learn what our children are up to. You can't say me, I don't do Facebook, so. You don't have to know the details. You don't need to know how to tag somebody, how to form a group, but you need to know some basic things about it. This one I want to challenge us. We cannot be intellectually lazy because we are dealing with our lives of precious souls. Some basic information about what our children are doing, what Snapchat we need to know. And so that's the challenge I'm giving to you. Um, the, by the way, we are called, uh, what, what, is the, what are the two terms? The, the children are digital natives. What are we called? Digital, I forget the word. But, but, but we, are, we, are, you know, we are like people who are visiting their generation. They, they, are, they, are, they are born, they are natives. You know, they are citizens. We are, we are visitors in their world, you know. But don't forget... <laughs> Some say aliens. <laughs> yes, yes, we are digital aliens. Don't forget that God Himself, because of His vision, because of His mission, because of His heart, He came into our world. God, oh, He came into our world and became like us. And so, if we're going to connect with the next generation, we've got to be incarnational. And I'm not saying it's easy. But once this is the calling God has given us, and parenting is a calling, if it's a calling God has given us, and there's evidence that it is your calling because the children came from your loins. I, 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 my wife and I always say that because we are very busy sometimes. My goodness, but for COVID, there were times that I, I was taking 70 flights a year. Busy. But one of the things we always say to ourselves is, we can't go and save people here, go and preach there, go and do there. Yeah, it's good, we do all of that. But if there's a ministry, we, we are not sure whether God, I'm not, did God ask me to come here today? Maybe, maybe not. I could have been wrong. I could have heard wrong. Maybe, you know, Mrs. Mrs. Hansen's pressure, so I say, I'll come. You know, all your men, I haven't seen you I haven't been in a long time. So I, say, oh, let, you know, I could be wrong. But you know one thing I cannot be wrong about? The ministry to my children. Because they came from my loins. Like, what else is the will of God? You know what I'm saying? You can't be wrong about that. So I'm challenging us. Not to give up and say, yeah, I don't understand these things. Let's press it. And one of the ways you can bond is actually to ask the children to teach you. Unless they have something really sinister in mind. They actually, whoa, it's a privilege to teach mommy. Oh, daddy, daddy wants to learn. 
and they will teach you some of those stuff. One of the last thing I'll say is, we need to keep praying for the hearts of our children. You know, that's one of, the most, one of the most painful things for me as a preacher that I cannot make my children do anything. It's, it's, it's one of the most difficult things that you cannot make somebody do it. That's, that's witchcraft. That's manipulation. You know? We've got to bless them, give them the environment, give them the word, but at the end of the day, they will make their own decisions. And so one of my prayers always is, God, Make the hearts of our children malleable to your word, to your spirit. It's the best thing you can give them. Pray that their hearts, because you can bring two children up the same way. And one goes north, and one goes south. The difference is the heart. How one responds and one doesn't. Think about it. There were 12 people that walked with Jesus. One of them was a thief. Like, you, not that the guy was going to church and was a thief. He was with Jesus. How can you walk with Jesus for three and a half years and be a thief? Uh, you get what I'm saying? It's the heart, it's the condition of the heart. He was stealing small, small from the money chest, small, small from the money chest, and ultimately he sold his master for 30 pieces of silver. He was a thief. And he was walking with Jesus. So I said, God, please. Mold the hearts of these children. Let them respond to you. Oh, my son and Ejina, sometimes he will lie to me. And I'm like, oh, like it, not it hurts me. That one's a brother. It pains me. You know, but I can only pray. Because I'm telling you, in our home, the word is there every single day. Every child has their own quiet time. They come and share. We have a time of sharing. Every week we have family altar thrice a week, apart from their own quiet time. We pray for the nations of the world. Like, but at the end of the day, their hearts. Let's pray for the hearts of our children. You want to add? Okay. I'll just say one. That is, command your morning. Don't think it's too late. So, although you may think you may have missed an opportunity, you can start even now. And the power of the Holy Spirit is beyond our comprehension. There may have been mistakes made. There may have been things that you thought you may have missed. But realize, everything is going to work according to God's plan and purpose for your life and for your children's life. So they could be old, possibly in their 40s, at this stage where they feel they know. But the Holy Spirit can make a way. And if you continue praying, out of the blue, there will be an opportunity to possibly even invite them out for family outing. And that is where you can actually break the ice. And the beauty of it is, in your interactions, someone will say something, and voila, you can take over. I always say, God knows why he makes things happen in a certain way. So a message could have come 10 years ago. It will come now. Because possibly tomorrow, that is when you need it. So it's never too late. It is indeed the right time. So we have uh, a couple of questions online. We'd just like to read a few of them. So uh, please, what is the role of the church in helping raise the next generation of faithful children? Um, Please, do you have any recommendations on how parents and churches can partner to do this effectively? Sorry. So the question is, please, what is the role of the church in helping raise the next generation of faithful children. And this is a follow-up. I said, please, do you have any recommendations on how parents and churches can partner to do this effectively? So I'll use the example. Even now, why are we having an AVOC? It's because a vision was implanted in someone's heart at a certain point in time that this needs to start. And um, I would say, I myself, till this year, I wasn't a regular participant, even online. I would say I can use an example of the previous years, possibly because I was studying then. But I remember 
because I'm a president of a chapter in Full Gospel, every Tuesday that we have fellowship meeting, fiscal, virtual, I'm there. So this year I made it a critical covenant in my life that I will not miss an AVOC. And I've been try transcribing some of what is shared. Because what I realize is, like how Doc spoke, he has done a PowerPoint presentation. There have been a few where we don't see the PowerPoint. Most of it is extempore. But if we're able to write, share, even in the, um, the research journals, just imagine, someone will see and realize, oh, this topic was discussed in February. Because of that, in March, I will miss. And that person can actually reach out to others. And that's how the church can impact our lives. If you listen to social media, if you listen to even the news media, etc., Ghana is going through a certain phase where a lot of us are not happy. A lot of us seem dissatisfied because there's so much happening. But it's sessions like this in an Aviusi where you realize you can actually pray for a divine miracle to happen. You may hear a testimony that will come up of someone who is going through a similar challenge like you. And because of that testimony, it's going to transform your life. And I believe this is the impact the church is making now. So we together, those watching online, those here physically, can make it a point. Let us see what we can do to make what we are doing significant in many lives. So you could be the one, possibly to share the link with a lot of people on your WhatsApp contact. How many of us have done that before? Possibly never. If you've not done that before, start today. How many of us go to YouTube and honestly, the time I went to YouTube and saw the number of likes, I realized if at least half of our church was to post, like, share, you will be shocked at the impact. So from today, let's make the covenant that we as a church are a big family. What we are going to do is we are going to impact not just Ghana, but globally. Share, impact, release. And even as you do that, pray that whoever the Lord wants this message to touch, may it work. And you'll be shocked at the outcome. God is indeed powerful, and this world is our living God's own, and he's going to make sure no turbulence will cause anything to change. Amen. Thank you very much. Do you want to add anything? Okay, fine. That's very good. Yes. I'll just add this, that as the church provides the platforms, the programs, the syllabi, I think it's important that there's a systematic discipleship process and all of that. I think parents just still need, still need to still remember that the primary responsibility of raising children lies with us. I remember a situation where a man said to well, a pastor friend of mine uh, when he was working for Youth for Christ, he said, I hope you're teaching the boy, the, my boy the scriptures because I, I, I ain't going to do it. Yeah. There are people, and let me be careful here also. If you're a youth pastor, you are not primarily the primary responsibility, the primary person responsible for the upbringing of the youth. Their parents are. Stop usurping parents' authority. Parents need to do their job. I need to do my job as a parent. Now, research, all these churches need to check, check and see how much, how much resources are we giving to family ministry. All right, how many youth pastors do we have? How many family life pastors do we have so we need to look at our resources and children's service there are a lot of churches children's service is the last thing they think about last thing you know so the church needs to reorganize refocus but parents are the primary people responsible for the discipleship of their children i don't want to take it away from from parents it is our primary responsibility. Having said that, research has shown that every child needs five mentor figures in their lives to be able to have a stable um, Christian life and to be able to flourish. Five mentor figures. So you could, you could be one as a parent, but then maybe a youth pastor, maybe some uncle who is whatever. Some, you know. So look at their children's ecosystem and make sure that they have five role models, five mentor figures, and that's, that creates a stable. So that's how the church and parents can partner. Thank you very much. Please, a round of applause for our speakers. Okay.
Okay, so we have uh, a few announcements. So an obviously continues uh, next week, and we have uh, still on the main theme, walking, um, what do you call it, ancient paths in contemporary issues. But we have family and sexuality to be handled by our very own, I mean, past own, Reverend Dr. Bidia Kwakutu, who will be taking us through uh, the family and sexuality. So let's make it a point to be to be there online and also in person. All right, so we'll take time in the, uh, our offertory. After that, we'll have the closing prayer and then also the benediction. So we'll take the offertory by the help of the, of the sites persons. So please, we can come forward and uh, drop our offer tree. I'm sure for those online, uh, we will have a, a pop-up that will show you the Momo code and how to go about it. Let's pray over the offer tree. Everlasting Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for what you have given us. We are giving it back to you. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that it shall be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, the purpose for these gifts, Lord, will be used again for the furtherance of your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, so. So to have the benediction, but uh, let's just um, close our eyes again and just have the closing prayer. Everlasting Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for such a start. We thank you for the resource people. We thank you for the time that you have made to be with us. We thank you for the efforts of the committee. We thank you for everyone who's supporting um, an AVOC and the information that we have gotten here. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that it shall blossom, that we shall, we shall, we shall shared in the mighty name of jesus and most importantly we shall practice what we are hearing that in the mighty name of jesus we shall bring forth the generations and generations that are that are, are akin to your word lord in the mighty name of jesus the an underlining principle is your word lord we pray in the mighty name of jesus that you shall give us hearts that are able to 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 grow your word that's able to take your word lord in the mighty name of jesus that at the end of the day glory and honor will be to your name alone lord in the mighty name of jesus we pray please let us rise as we uh, share the grace so the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen and surely Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. All right. Okay, okay sure. So, uh, Dr. Yapebi, he mentioned the book before. Uh, it's Thinking Outside the Window, and uh, we will share his contact. If you want a copy, you can get it. Uh, we also, okay, so he has a few here, so if you are here and you want a copy, you can also see him quickly and get one. We also, with your permission, get to the slides so that we can be able to also uh, look into the slides better and really understand what we learned here. Okay, so thank you very much for being part of uh, the very first session of the Family Month. We hope that next week you will join us. Thank you very much.